All right, let's try to do today's daf very quickly. So we have a new mission. Anachrim ayv dem so harmless a voice. Hein mutar mashulin osurin. So if if Gentiles worship mountains and hills, the mountains and hills themselves you're allowed to walk on and and have benefit from and use. But anything that's on them, if they're coated with gold or silver, then you cannot um, have any benefit from the gold or silver. Like Deuteronomy 7 says, you shouldn't uh, covet the silver and gold that is upon them. Because it says that their gods are on the mountains, which means that the mountains themselves are not their gods. The mountains are on the hills, and the hills themselves are not their gods. So how come, if that's the case, why is a a tree that's worshipped prohibited from benefit? The answer is, a person can cut down a tree, but a person can't cut down a whole mountain. So Bikiva says, I'm going to explain this and, and judge before you. He said, that any place where you're going to find a high mountain and beautiful hill landscape, beautiful trees, you should know people worship idols there. So the Gemara explains the first opinion in the Mishnah what we say is that Rabbi Yosi Aglili Amarami Barchama Rabbi Yosi Lakish Tzipay Harkahar because we see that Rami Barchama said in the name of Rish Lakish that if the mountain was coated with gold or silver, that's considered like the mountain, the hill itself, so what's the difference between these two opinions? So the first opinion in Mishnah says that the covering of the mountain is not like the mountain, and so therefore it's separate from the mountain and forbidden from use. Meaning if it's a mountain that's worshipped, the mountain itself is not prohibited, but the covering of the mountain is, if it's coated in, in gold or silver. Rebiesi Glili holds that the covering is also like the mountain, and so therefore it's per- permitted in use. Rebiesi uh, um, says, according to all, uh, according to everybody, According to all the Tanayim, the covering the mountain is not like the mountain. Right, we're on Ahmed Base. So, three minutes in, this is the first Ahmed was short, but the second was a little bit longer. But I think we should be able to get it done. So, the Mishnah is talking about a tree that was not planted as an idol, it was planted first and it became an idol later. It was worshipped later by the by the pagan. Excuse me. Come if Ligi Tana Kama Savar Yilon should not lose safe of the Vada Mutter. Lose safe of Vada Mutter. Um, because the, the argument is that the Tana Kama, the first opinion the Mishnah holds, the tree that was planted, just as a tree, and later on, was worshipped. That you're allowed to use the tree. But Yisiglili holds that such a tree is prohibited from use. Mumai, where does he learn this? I mean, the Tani Seifa, from we learned in the last part of the Mishnah, the ending clause. The whole reason why the tree that was worshipped is prohibited is because the a human being could cut it down. So. It, a mountain, a hill, a river, we could change it, but we can't, like, cut down the whole thing. The tree, a human being could cut down the whole th- 
thing. Um, and so therefore the tree would be prohibited. But then the Gemara asks, what, it, what are we talking about? What are we adding here when you say anything that a human being has power over, could cut down, whatever? What are we adding? My love. Are we talking perhaps about the tree that was planted and worshipped the end of Afra Biyasi? Ben Rabbi Yehuda Sava Elon Shnatay Lusivvadei Aser. Rabbi Yosef Ben Rabbi Yehuda holds that a tree that was planted and then was worshipped later is prohibited. Sanya, we have a brayser. Rabbi Yosef Ben Rabbi Yehuda Aima Metich Shnema Lahem Alaharm Leharm Alaharm Lahem Alugvois Alugvois Alaharm Shemayani Tachas Kol Eitzranan Alaharm Eitzranan Alaharm Talmud Loim Avshrem Tishrim Beish. So Rabbi Yosi, Rabbi Yehuda holds like this, a tree that was planted in the end it was <laughs> worshipped is prohibited, but we have a b'risa that teaches like this, Rabbi Yosi, Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yosi, Rabbi Yehuda said that since scripture says their gods are on their mountains, it should be noted, I don't say Elohim, I'm talking about idols, we say Elohim, because it's Lash and Chol, it's, it's it's not uh, we only say Elohim when talking about the true God. Just noting that of, of that, and of course that's when we're not praying or actually, even when we're actually learning, you're allowed to say God's name, but uh, colloquially. But when we're talking about false gods, then you're always allowed to say Elohim. Just pointing that out. Um, and so the, their gods are on the mountains. Their mountains are not gods. Their mountains are on the hills. The hills are not their gods. And it says, under every nice, uh, beautiful tree are their gods, and the trees themselves are not their gods. So you would think that the mountains and the hills are not their gods, so too the trees are not their gods. So just so There's something, there's some idol that's connected to the mountain or the hill or the tree on it or on, under it. The Torah actually says you should burn their Asherah. The Asherah means a tree that's worshipped. So why does Scripture say that they worship under every nice tree? It's like Rabbi Kiva taught in our Mishnah that I'm going to explain and judge before you that any place that you find a, a high mountain or a beautiful little a nice uh, valley or a beautiful tree, you should know that there's idolatry there. Excuse me. Maybe not every tree is worshipped, but sometimes under the trees they put idols. Verbonin. <laughs> so how do the rabbis understand this verse where it says, and under every nice tree, Hai Vashram is from the Aish, my How do we do the rabbis deal with this verse that says you should burn their Asherah, which was understood to be an idolatrous tree, in fire? So you say that's specifically talking about a tree that was planted. When it was planted, the the pagans' intention was for worship, not a tree that was that grew on its own, was planted earlier, and then later was worshipped. We also have to try to understand the hachi. What is this hachi nami? Here too. For this Ella, Elon Shantel Where do we understand that a tree that was planted and was worshipped subsequently um that's prohibited in Africa like a tree to Gideon? Another verse about a Shavas, about trees that are worshipped, that you should cut down their Ashavas. So Aza who ate Shikadui Aser Vikari Mutter. 
So when you cut down a tree, you still leave um, you know, a, a stump, right? And then roots. So if you cut down the tree and it still has the roots, meaning if it was planted as an idol, so the roots should be prohibited. But here's a tree that it was, you cut it down, the part you cut down, that's prohibited. But the roots or the, you know, but that's still in the ground, that you could have benefit from every year. That would be a tree that was planted first and subsequently worshipped. So then the question, we beg the question if it talks about burning an asher in fire, a worshipped tree in fire, what does that scripture come to teach us? If it wasn't said, we would say, So then we say, no, when it says that they should burn the. What, what would be if we, we wouldn't have both verses? So you would have thought, if it didn't say you're going to burn the, 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 the trees in the fire. I would think that when it says cut down the trees, it's talking specifically cutting down the trees, a tree that was um, planted to be worshipped. Uh, but now that it says that you should burn them in fire, I say lay, I say lay, um, to get in, so that the fact that there's something extra shows that the ones that would be burned with fire. That's referring to the trees that were planted first, and the ones that are cut down are the trees that were, that were that meaning to burn in the fire that were planted for idolatry, and the ones in the fire, the ones that were not planted for idolatry, and were subsequently worshipped. For abundance, how do the rabbis learn this uh, seeming superfluous teaching? How do the rabbis understand this? It says you should cut down the trees, what did they do with this? Look at it, Rabbi Shubin Levi. It's according to Rabbi Shubin Levi's teaching, then Rabbi Shubin Levi, Gedu'ai, Akum Koyin Melkivush Eretzel. A very interesting uh, teaching from from the great town of Rabbi Shubin Levi, the great tzaddik. Rabbi Shubin Levi said that idolatry has to be destroyed before they can conquer the Holy Land. Kibosh Yisrael, Koinam Lubir Akum. So they uh, they have to cut down the idols before they enter the land, but then they have to conquer the land before they have to destroy the idols. The son of Yosef, as Yosef teaches in the Tatzdem, is Mibachosom Vanach Shvatim Zvetsuvosom Hanach. It says you should ruin their their uh, altars. But then further, it says you should break their altars. And it goes further. So what does it mean? They, they could rest. Safer boy, they have to burn it. Amar of Huna Anach. Or Daif. That once you. They fulfilled this commandment, they have to chase after their. Uh, the, the Canaanites, and then once they're done fighting the Canaanites, that's when they burn all of the Canaanite altars. Rabbi Yosi Bar and Rabbi Yehuda, Isfar, Rabbi Yosi and Yehuda has this idea, Manale. Where does he get this idea from? Nafkale, Tabit, Abed Tabdun. He understands it from in Deuteronomy 12 where it says you should surely destroy it. First you destroy it, you lose it out, and then you destroy it again. You destroy it once, you destroy it again. So he learns the same halacha from a different verse. But the rabbis understand this verse to say when it comes 
to destroying idolatry, you have to root it out. Um, destroy it again and again. So where does Rabbi Yosef and Yehuda understand rooting it out? From another verse in Deuteronomy 12, it says, You should destroy their name from that place. Shame. But the rabbis understand that this means you give insulting names to idols. As we've seen throughout this Masech, the Sanya of Lezer, I remember nine, Lo'oikar Akum, Tzitzachel Shor Shachar, Tamaloim Avadu, Tamas Shmam. Learned in the Bryce of Lezer says, where do we learn that one who uproots of idolatry has to root up after it, root out after it? It says you should destroy their name. Um... Only Rekiva, Rekiva says, like for them, it doesn't already know what he says, he should surely destroy it. So it's then, uh, um, Kain, Matam, and Loim, and Tim, and Shmam, and Makamahu, and Shmam, and Makamahu. So what does it say you have to destroy their name from that place? Look how this You have to give it a name, and then, uh, meaning you give it a, a, a uh, an insulting name. All right, thank you for watching. We did a daf in less than 17 minutes. God bless. Please like, share, and subscribe, comment. Um, and have a very happy Purim. Thank you.